So here we are for part two of the video on the HMV 2330 radiogram from around about 1969. The idea on the workbench here is to change a lot of the electrolytic capacitors. The black electrolytic capacitors, which I mentioned, are usually made by Erin and Mr. C's with me. Just to tell me the other one. No, there's, a, there's an awful make anyway now we neither of us can remember until we take them out so on the chassis we've got that's one of the black ones which needs to come out that's one of the black ones there there and on the amplifier chassis there's quite a few of them on the voltage stabilizer I'll just move it across so you can actually see on the voltage stabilizer this one is actually damaged it's already lost some of its contents at a thousand microfarad there we're also going to change some of these ones which are more reliable but whilst we've got it in bits we may as well for the small cost they are and they're on the tuner board now as i say again we haven't plugged this in because the customer said there was an awful hum when you did so we know the electricity capacitors are no good so we're going to do a blanket job of those before going any further so it's comprised of the amplifier the stereo decoder there's a couple on there the radio tuners, a couple on there, and the voltage stabilizer board. The reason you've got a voltage stabilizer board, bear in mind it's very cap tuning on these products right across the board. So there you have it, and uh, I'll go back in to record when we've changed those. So as you can see, we've changed the capacitors on the amplifier board. Some of these strange obsolete values like um, um, 75 microfarads with up to 100, you'll be appreciative that the tolerance on electrolytic capacity is quite wide. You always go higher, so if you'd got 400 microfarads, you'd replace it with 470 uh, with today's values, and that's absolutely okay. We've upped the voltage on a lot of these as well. And um, for example, I think the, was it, um, 20 volts we took out from from these well we got hundreds and they're not they're not huge they all fit in you know so uh, there we go so we've just got a, a couple more to do on the decoder board and on the tuner and then uh, it'll be time to plug it in on the bench uh, to the bench speakers and we'll see what happens Right, so the next day we are ready to do some further discussion on this video. So, having changed the capacitors I mentioned, there were two in the on the stabilizer board. I can't tell you the part numbers. It's um, one of them's 100 microfarads, and there's eight microfarads which we've replaced with 10. When you're working on things like this. Bearing in mind this is like 1968, 1969, and there were different rules on shrouding of mains terminals. That is mains live, and of course the on and off switch, just there, is also mains live. One of the wonderful things about British controls of uh, yesteryear is they've got nice big holes in them to spray your uh, cleaner. We use the service hole one. As I've said on the CB videos, I've been using that for 30 odd years. Not the same tin, however. That looks like a um, selenium rectifier, doesn't it? Uh, next to the uh, mains uh, capacitor, the um, main smoothing capacitor. I've not changed that. We would only change one of those if there was a, an awful hum or if it was obviously leaking. And I have to admit that after doing these for 28 years, I've never had to change one. But there's going to be a first time at some point. Now on the 2330 and the 23301 which is the mono version without the stereo decoder, we'll just zoom out so you can see what we're talking about. You've got the FM tuner which is single conversion with an IF of 10.7. You've got the decoder. We cannot touch this. We do not have a signal generator which will produce a stereo signal. Now, they're about £12,000 and for what we charge at 36 quid we would not be uh, ever doing that so 
we hope they work in stereo. The problem is that where we are here in the middle of nowhere, it's very rare we can get a, a stereo signal on anything, so they usually end up switching to mono. The, uh, so moving across to the amplifier, on this version you've got the AD161, AD162 um, transistors, whereas on the previous model, the 2328, you've got the same radio, you hadn't got the option of FM, it was always mono, and you'd got the, um, although you got some silicon transistors, some of the amplifier was germanium. And of course, that same shared the same amplifier chassis with the 2026. So, uh, what have we done? Well, as I mentioned, we've changed. The, I'll tell you what capacitors and uh, listen. Capacitor 47, 75 microfarads, and we've been able to replace that with 75 microfarads from RS components. Capacitor 60, 2 microfarads. We've put 2.2 in, as you will expect. Capacitor 65, 400 microfarads. We've been able to source that from RS components. Capacitor 68, 750 microfarads. Again, we've been able to source that from RS components. Capacitor 66, 400 microfarads. As I said, we've sourced that. Capacitor 78, 300 microfarads. That's that one there. It's in, in between the two uh, big ones there. And we've put 330 in because we can't get the 300 as you can well imagine capacitor 71 75 microfarads as I said we got that from RS components capacitor 74 2 microfarads 2.2 we've fitted capacitor 80 uh, 400 microfarads as I said we got that from RS components and capacitor 82 750 microfarads we got that out from RS components so that's the amplifier basically any of these horrible black things I'll just zoom in because if you've not experienced this before, uh, sorry about the stray chip in there. It's uh, and the odd fuse. These are, I know they've done forty-five years, but I never thought they were that reliable at the time. And look, that's got leakage coming out of it. We will test these later. Some will be all right. Some will be out of spec. But the point is, if you spot those in any product, you get rid of them. And that's been policy for years. So modern components, of course, are much smaller. So whereas we've got something like the the 750 microfarad capacitors here, uh, there were something like uh, let's uh, see if I've got them handy. There were 18 volts. Well, you know we've put 100 volt ones in. So I don't think we'll see this back in uh, in the next hundred years. Right. Um, so onto the stereo decoder. We've changed two, um, three capacitors on there. No, two, I'm lying to you. 150 microfarads, which is that one there, which is capacitor 164. Again, we've sourced that from RS components. And 100, C152, eight microfarads. Of course, that's all back from the valve days, isn't it? Eight microfarads. And we've replaced that with 10, of course. And these tiny modern components, I mean, that's 50 volts. So what came out of there was nine. Now, if we move over to the radio chassis, now they're always troublesome. The number of 2320, uh, 2328s and 23300s, 23301s, which you will see um, without the radio working by this stage, is like most of them. And that's because they use germanium transistors, and whether you use them or not, they grow internal crystal whiskers and short themselves out. So, uh, first of all, the capacitors we've changed. And capacitor 39 and capacitor 4. So we've got those two. They were 8 microfarads. We've replaced them with 10, of course. Capacitor 36, 400 microfarads. And again, that's come from RS components. So, we powered this up. Uh, incidentally, we did replace the pilot light there, and we also replaced the stereo beacon light, which is uh, on a, uh, a little plug-in holder. Anyway, we powered it up, and we were greeted with both channels working properly. I said we'd sprayed all the controls. The pickup wire we'd just chopped off, that'll be 
soldered back onto the solder tag. And quite simply, you know, you can put your thumb on, on one hot and you can put your thumb on the other hot and you're going to get both channels. On this product, there isn't a, a balance control. We have workshop speakers, which um, are actually 8 ohms, and this amplifies 10, but we haven't run it too uh, uh, vigorously, so we ha we're not going to overload it for that bit for the time we're going to be playing with it in here. So that brings me to the radio. Now, of course, our electronic tune very cap, and it's one of the first products to ever do that. Let's see if we can just uh, pop that a bit wider for a moment. What you have on the control panel is you've got three buttons, which are your presets, and they're the usual press and, and turn like the old television tuners were. And then on the left you've got an AFC automatic frequency control. To the left it's off, to the right it's on. You will probably all know you're not you would never try and tune the radio with it in the on position or you're fighting the automatic frequency control and it certainly isn't gonna lock properly. So over to the single conversion Superhet FM receiver board. Now, as I say, the transistors in these are troublesome. On this version, I think these two could be silicon um, rather than... I haven't got the data book in front of me, but I think they are on this. They certainly look like it. And what we were greeted with was the usual nothing. And what we discovered is on the... I'll just try and zoom in. On the, the tuner's input transformer or ballon or whatever we're going to call it just there on the edge of the picture you've got the you've got a, a cable going in there to which goes to the aerial socket and you'll be aware that these products have got an internal dipole aerial for good reception areas and when we use these out when we use these on the work on these on the outside benches we can get reception on the internal aerial though it will never be in stereo where we are um, so you've got that and that's 70 uh, that's 50 ohms input and that of course matches to the the input the front end of the receiver and one of those wires was off it's a cotton covered very thin um, usual kind of transformer winding type of wire and it's actually come off there now we've not knocked that off but it was snapped so that's sold it but of course with these germanium transistors we knew there was going to be snags we've had a 23 2018 once where we changed all five transistors and some of these are 17 pounds each now you know you've got 100 pounds worth of transistors just in doing that well we're lucky with this one and what we discovered is on this transistor which if i just look at the service manual is especially if it's the right way up transistor 3 we've got transistor 3 there transistor 4 transistor 5 they're the IF ones and on the front end you've got transistor 1 and transistor 2 and what we found when we put the signal generator on an absolutely great big whacking signal is we could actually tune in FM 95 megs but it was as deaf as a post and um, we did test both we took both those transistors out and tested them they were okay just in case and I did some voltage checks and we discovered that we've got a voltage because that goes to the voltage rail we were expecting kind of 12 volts one end and uh, I think 2 point something the other and it was zero so I thought, right, that's probably short the transistor shorting it to deck, which it was. So whip that out, and it's uh, it was actually short circuit. Well, I happen to have got a, re a, a second-hand transistor that I bought on eBay for uh, just four quid. It, you, if you look on eBay, there's people who unfortunately scrap things to nick transistors out of. But I took the opportunity and bought a couple, and I say I wanted four quid each. Well, there we go. Hey, that's what we've had to do. So that is a second-hand transistor that came off eBay, and it burst into life, and absolutely fantastic. So what I'll just do, we'll just switch it on, and we'll see if we can tune something in. Uh, we'll, I've plugged a little dipole arrow into the workshop here.
you can hear that's a very scratchy signal, but that's the best we're going to get. I'll wave the aerial about. Oh, there we are. And we've got... That's the treble control on the front. I'll just put zoom out. We've got the bass control. Got the volume control. 7 watts RMS per channel. So, you know, that's that's fantastic. That's working. Now, whilst we've just got this... Um, I'll just turn it off. Because when this is in, the controls are upright. And this is then the back of the record compartment. You've got these two sockets, which are switchable from the mode switch here. Um, the one which is labelled tape is the 5-pin DIN socket. And, of course, you can plug anything into that. And you record and playback. So that can go to a a computer, it can go to an MP3 player, or those people who've got smartphones, not an 18 year old Nokia like me, you can play things through this or you can record from this device. So, very versatile, standard 5 pinned in, 180 degree socket. You can get the leads, you know, a lot of Japanese type equipment is phono, whereas it was always the European stuff which was 5 pinned in. It's absolutely standard. I mean, the times you see on eBay, funny socket on the back no it's not a funny socket it's absolutely standard and it's five pinned in so those leads are available you know one pound twelve and plug yourself into something else if that's what you wanted to play back through the very good amplifier because it's 20 hertz to 30 kilohertz it it is true hi-fi whatever people will tell you as far as i'm concerned anything that exceeds 20 to twenty thousand hertz is proper hi-fi so You've then got another socket here, which is a 3.5mm jack. That is mono. It's pointless plugging anything in there which is stereo, because it'll only come through the left-hand channel. And although there's a mono uh, switch on the front to switch so that both channels are paralleled up, that is mono. So there's no point plugging things in. What that was aimed for is to plug an AM radio tuner um, in, you know, your typical transistor radio. And I've got, I've got a typical transistor radio here, because here is the... HMV, I don't know what the model number is on this one. Uh, this is something we bought recently and sorted out for my own use. And um, this was typical of the kind of transistor radio that they would have expected you to plug in. And on the top, you've got a tape recorder socket and you've got an earphone socket. So you plug the tape recorder socket into the, from their 3.5mm mono to their 3.5mm mono. And of course, this radio has got short wave, long wave, and medium wave and thus you would enhance your listening pleasure. And that's what they planned you to do. They didn't put AM tuners in Stereo Masters because the quality just wasn't there. These wanted to, They wanted to do these to be tip-top quality and that's why they're FM only. So there you have it, we're gonna, it's working, it's gonna go back in the cabinet and we'll see you on the next video.